There's nothing to get, not, in, not anything in this world to get excited about today. But I can get excited about that. I can get excited about one thing. I got a mansion over the hilltop. Yeah. Nothing can, no, no weapon can form against me. No, I thank God for that. We should be rejoicing today because our name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. There's no devil, there's no demon can erase that today. I'm glad I've got a mansion over a hilltop. Well, glory!
would, we'll come in. And, uh, we need to go to God in prayer this morning. A lot to pray about. Um, a lot of people remember. A lot of things happen that we need God's help in. Uh, where are you at, Charles? Come on, Charles. Come on. <laughs>
help the people and send them messages and do these videos. And his dad said he's, he stays busy for the, for the board of business all week long. So when he gets here, he worked his butt off to get a chance to rejoice and uh, everything. But uh, I want to just say, you uh, right on time. You know, with Jesus is right on time. Amen. Somebody might need to hear that this morning. They said for Jesus, your friend is about to die of
felt his arms all around me and I in my dark despair. I had more gains and losses and I had no more joy to her. Has this great longing and so on the In my life, I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I have my share of hard times, my Messiah is always good. Through it all, God's been
Thank you, Lord. No more trials, no more troubles, no That's more tribulations. Right. And oh, I'm not going to get there by my great, wonderful works, Matthew. Right. But I'm going to get there because God sent me good to say no right to sing on a Sunday morning, not by 11 year old. And I thank God for that. Have your Bibles turn with me to 1 Samuel this morning. Fifteen chapter, first Samuel, and this we read one verse. Try not to keep you real long this morning. Mm. Fifteen chapter of the first Samuel, twenty second verse. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, Amen. to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rain. That's all we're going to read this morning. All right. Uh, real sweet. We're going to jump over the New Testament and read here. God will have his will. And uh, but to give you a little background there, what that was about right there, Saul was king, and uh, the Lord had commanded Saul to go out and uh, to kill a bunch of people and this and that, and uh, commanded them to do a certain way is what the Lord had uh, commanded Saul to do. And uh, when Saul got out there, Saul decided, uh, Brother Randy, that he knew a better way, amen. Yeah. Saul thought that he was going to do it his way, and Saul didn't kill everything and do it exactly the the way that the Lord had commanded Saul to do, there was, uh, I believe, some of the uh, Malachites there, if memory serves me correctly, that he spared, the Bible says, and uh, from Agag there. And, uh, and as Saul had journeyed his way back uh, back to the camp, the Lord had a little conversation with Samuel there. And uh, the Lord asked Samuel, said, what is, uh, what is going on here? In other words, he said, did I not command Saul to... Uh, go out and kill all these and to do this and uh, to take care of all of them. So Samuel went to Saul there and uh, Samuel asked Saul what was going on there. He said, uh, Saul, what in other words, what is this bellowing? And amen to my ears that I hear of these animals and, and this cattle. And Saul said, well, he said, I thought that uh, that I'm just spared, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but uh, he said, I'm just going to uh, do uh, save a few of these folks over here and not uh, kill all of them, if you will. And Amen. The Bible says that it repented the Lord that he had made Saul king uh, uh, over there. And you pray for just a minute here, preacher. Uh, what is that? I got to do with anything, but the Bible says obedience is better uh, uh, than sacrifice. And that, amen, from that point on, that caused problems with those Saul. That, amen, that he didn't do exactly what the Lord had, had commanded him to do from that very day. And, amen, and the Lord has given us explicit instructions today. If you're here this morning and you're sick and troubled and I don't know what to do, then you're going to have to do it God's way. I laugh this morning and you say, Preacher, how, how is that possible? The Bible says that uh, John chapter 9 that Jesus had passed by and I uh, came into a town, Matthew, and he seen a man that, amen, that had been blind, amen, sitting there. And, amen, the disciples had asked Jesus, and uh, they said, Jesus, who sinned? Uh, amen, was it this boy that sinned, uh, or his parents that sinned? Amen. Uh, and Jesus told them, uh, he said, neither one of them uh, has sinned, but that the glory of God, uh, amen, might be glorified. Uh, uh, amen. The Bible says, uh, Amen. That Jesus seen this young, uh, this young man that was standing there. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, amen. He'd been uh, born birth. Uh, uh, amen. A uh, uh, blind rather. Uh, and the Bible says that Jesus, uh, uh, Amen, went up to the young boy. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, amen. The Bible teaches us, uh, Amen, that Jesus, uh, Amen, didn't uh, have to go call in another specialist, uh, Amen, to give this opinion uh, or that opinion huh, on what to do with the young man there. Huh, uh, but the Bible teaches us huh, amen, that Jesus got down. Huh, amen. Huh, and he got the dirt that was into the ground. Huh, 
Amen. You can agree with this if you want to. Amen. But the Bible says, Brother Randy, Amen, that Jesus spit into the dirt. Amen. And Jesus got down, got the dirt up out of the ground. And he spit in it. And he rubbed it together. And he rubbed it on that boy's eyes. He said, now go to the pool of Siloam, I believe it is. He said, go down there and wash yourself. Amen. It's holy young boy. Amen. He went down to that pool. Oh, yes, he did. And the Bible says that when he went, I got down in the pool. Amen. And he washed himself. Oh, that he came back different than what he was. Oh, when he went down there. Oh, Brother Randy, the Bible says. Amen. And he came back. A sin. Amen. He was able to see. Oh, let me tell you. Something this morning, Brother Dave. Oh, when God's done with you. Amen. You'll look different. Than how you was before. Amen. You say preacher. How you believe that. Amen. The Bible says. Oh, there is a man named Legion. Amen. And everybody around. How oh, they live next to this crazy man. How huh? oh, they said, leave me alone. Huh? I mean, have nothing to do with him. Huh? Amen. Huh? Everybody in that community. Huh? I mean, they lived around no legion. Huh? Oh, Brother Dave. Huh? Oh, they had to have been Baptists. A huh? oh, preacher, why do you say that? Because huh? oh, they said, leave the boy alone. Huh? He's done plumb crazy. Huh? Amen. Huh? Oh, Brother Randy, I don't know about you. Huh? Oh, but my Bible teaches me huh? oh, that if I see a brother huh? or a sister in need, Ha, amen. I'm to help them out. Ha, amen. If I don't, ha, amen. Ha, amen. How dwelleth the love of God in me? Ha, if I shut up, ha, of the bowels of compassion ha, on me. Ha, oh, let me tell you something, ha, oh, Brother Dean. Amen. I'm not going to pay your life bill for you ha, oh, just because you're too sorry ha, oh, to go to work. Ha, oh, amen. Ha, oh, but if you're hungry, ha, amen, we'll eat till we run out. Ha, oh, amen. Ha, oh, preacher, what are you talking about? Ha, amen. They said, stay away from Legion. Ha, he's a crazy man. Ha, he was sitting there. Ha, oh, the chains couldn't hold him. Ha, oh, the fetters couldn't hold him. Ha, oh, nothing could hold him. Ha, oh, the one day ha, he seen Jesus. Ha, amen. Standing over there. <laughs> and the Bible says yes, that when he came to him and when he got to Jesus yes. he was sitting there in his bride mind. Thank and you, Lord right, Jesus. Huh, amen. The ladies and the devil said, huh, Amen. Send us away. Huh, amen. Huh, you ever wonder why they said, huh, Send us away? Huh, amen. Huh, huh, let me tell you something. Huh, uh, this morning, church, huh, Amen. The devil, huh, he, he, he needs huh, a vehicle to drive. Yeah. Huh, yeah. And he does not care huh, if it's a child of God huh, or a herd of pigs. Right. Huh, the devil needs huh, a vehicle to drive. Huh, yeah. uh, so they send the evil spirit. Huh, amen. Away ha, into the herd of swine. Ha, that man was changed ha, of that very day. Ha, he didn't look like ha, what he previously looked like, Brother yeah. Dave. Ha, I don't think, ha, amen, we should look like ha, oh, where we started from. Ha, oh, there ought to be ha, a difference in our life. Yeah. So here this blind boy was. Here he was. And he got back into town there after he went and lost himself. He come back there. And a whole crowd had gathered around him, Brother Dave. And they seen this boy walking. And they said, Is not that the same boy? Is that not not the same boy? Amen. That was blind and could not see. And some of them stood around there. And you know what they said? A son said, Well, I think it's him. And it might be him. It sure does favor him. It sure does resemble him. Amen. But I'm not quite sure if that's him or not. So they asked the boy of the crowd gathered around. They said, Are you the one? Amen. Oh, that was blind. And now you see. He said, Yes, I am. Oh, they said, what happened to you? He said, listen. He said, all I know is this. He said, I was blind and I couldn't yeah. see. And this man over here, a spirit of yes, the earth, rubbed it on my eyes, told me to go wash. And I went down the walls and I came back seeing. Amen. And then the Pharisees and everybody else gathered around. I wanted to trip Jesus. They said, Jesus, he's a sinner man. He wouldn't do these things huh, on the Sabbath day huh, if he truly was huh, of the Son of God. Huh, so they got huh, of the boy's parents together huh, and they asked him. Huh, well, they 
said, is this your boy? Oh, they said, yes, it is. Oh, they said, did this man heal him? Oh, they said, listen, I don't know. Oh, they were scared to death. Oh, to say anything for Jesus. Amen. Yes, they was. Oh, they said, listen. All we know, he was blind. Oh, but now he sees. How it happened, I don't know. Amen. So they looked at the boy. And they said, listen. Amen. To this man. By the name of Jesus. Amen. Heal you. He said, listen, boys. Call him a crazy man if you want to. I know this much. I was blind and I couldn't see. And he touched me. And now I'm able to see. Amen. They were trying every way, which way in the world, to trip the Savior up. Amen. Because they wanted to find him doing something that goes against. Amen. The law. Amen. But here this young boy was that was blind and now was able to see. And you know how that happened? You know how he was able to be able to go from being blind to being able to be seen and be able to have his vision back? Obedience. Amen. He went. Amen. When God commanded him. You remember when the ten lepers? Remember when Jesus healed? When Jesus healed the ten lepers, you remember that? Yep. Amen. They all went, got healed. Yep. All ten of them turned around and came back to the Lord in the day. And they said, Lord, thank you so much for everything you've done. That's right, amen. Yeah. Amen. No, it was nine of them, one. No, it wasn't. One person out of all ten of them turned around and they give God thanks. If you can see this morning, it's only because of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Exactly right. Amen. I want to blind, but now I see. Amen. Amen. You remember, remember when Peter and John had went to the gate there and they'd seen the man that had been laying there all them years. Amen. He was asking an alms of them. When, when Peter and John was going into the temple, it was David. Amen. Amen. And he reached out to receive a hand out from them. And Peter, Peter looked at him. Amen. Peter said, look on us. And that man looked on him, expecting to receive, Brother Dave, a little bit of pocket change, if you will. Amen. He got more than all of the money that you could hold in four knots. Peter looked at him. Peter said, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Rise up and walk. And he grabbed him by the right hand. And he grabbed him. Yes, and he lifted him up. And the Bible says that the strength came to him. And everybody around him condemned Peter and John. And Peter told them, said the very one that you sent to Calvary is the one that healed this man. the very one. Why was Peter and John able to do such a thing? <laughs> Through their obedience. Amen. Matthew taught this morning in Sunday school about faith. Amen. You can have faith all day long, but faith without, faith without works is dead, doesn't it? Amen. Jesus walked into his room one day and he seen, some, seen a tree there Brother Randy, he reached up. There was a time of year the figs should have been on the tree. And he reached up on the tree. What did he find? And find nothing on it. Amen. What did Jesus tell him? He said, cast that tree down. Amen. He, Jesus didn't tell him, amen, to cast that tree down because it was doing something wrong. Amen. You know why Jesus cast that tree down? Well, not because it was doing something wrong. It's because it wasn't doing anything at all. That's why he cast it down. Amen. That's right. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We talked in Sunday school about Abraham and Isaac and how Abraham had blind faith. Amen. Abraham trusted God enough. I wish I had faith like Abraham. I wish I did. Abraham got up there, got the everything laid out. Before he went out there, he told the servants down in the bottom of the hill. He said, you boys stay here, me and the lads going down in the worship. And we will be back. 
That's faith, brother. That's faith. He got up here, got on Mount Moriah. He got the altar together, got the wood together, got the fire ready. I said, Father Abraham, I see the wood, the fire, I see the rope, I see the hatchet, but where's, where's the lamb, Father Abraham? Abraham said, don't worry, son. God will provide a lamb. Amen. Abraham took his son, bound him up right turned that altar. And I believe Abraham had the faith. I said this in Sunday school. But Abraham had the faith that I believe in my whole heart. That if he would have took that hatchet with Randy, and if he would have had to have taken Isaac's life right then, I believe Abraham had the faith that God, just like that, would ride where he's icing from the dead. And about the time that Abraham was fixing, on the let him have it, God said, Abraham, Abraham, do thy son no harm. He knew that Abraham was going to be obedient to him. This morning, amen. We can sacrifice all day long. Amen. That's right. But there's a difference between sacrifice and obedience. Amen. Amen. There's a big difference. And in order for God to help us, and in order for God to touch us and work in our lives, we've got to be obedient. Matthew was talking about Sunday school about three Hebrew children and how they told the king they wanted to bow down to that music. Amen. He heated the furnace seven times hotter, so hot that the man that threw the three Hebrew men in was killed instantly. Amen. But you remember what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king? They said, we're not going to bow down to you. Whether our God delivers us or not, we will not bow down to you. Amen. Then three Hebrew children, they had the faith that they believed that if they had to die in the way of a fiery furnace, that God would still be there for them. Amen? Yeah. That's obedience. Amen? Amen? That's obedience. Amen? Amen? Man laid there at the gate for 38 years. For 38 years he laid there sick. Amen? With the palsy. Amen? Amen? He sat there for 38 years waiting. He said, every time I'd go to step and get in that water, that an angel would come down a certain time of the year and trouble the water. Every time I'd go to get down in that water, something always steps down in front of me. Amen. When we stop being obedient to God, and we start being obedient to everything else in this life, everything's going to step in front of us. Amen. He said, if I could just have somebody help me get into the water, I know that I could be made whole. Amen. See, he had his theory. He had his ways of what needed to fix him getting into that water. But Christ came along and had other plans for him. Amen. That man was healed that day and never stepped one foot into that water. Amen. Amen. He said, take up thy bed and walk. And he did. And I'd say he had laying there for 38 years, today. I'd say he was glad to get up and walk around. Amen. What it takes? Obedience. Amen. Obedience this morning, church, is better than any sacrifice. You know what God wants from us? Randy, he don't want your money. He don't. And I'm not talking about the, the offering or nothing like that. We all know that it takes a little bit of money to keep the church going. We know that. Yeah. That's common sense. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But God's not after your money. God don't care how big your house is. God don't care. God don't care how many years you worked at General Motors. He don't care how many years you've been on the fire department. He don't care. He don't care how many lives you've saved or, or you've rescued. You know what God's interested in? How obedient you're willing to be to him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. How obedient you are to him. Now let me give you a little heads up, and you better you better listen to me. When you start going trying to be obedient to God and doing what God wants you to do, 
You better look out. Yeah. And I mean, you better look out, brother. It's going to come with every force that he's got at you. Amen. Every force that he'll come, he won't come, Dave. When you're on cloud nine on top of the mountain, everything's going great for you. I said the last Sunday, I believe it was, when he, when he came to tempt Jesus, he found Jesus. And bear with me when I say this, he found him in a weak moment. Christ was never weak as far as to not being able to get the job done. Don't misunderstand me. But his flesh was weak, Randy. He had fasted for 40 some days. Amen. Mm -hmm. He was tired and he was hungry. Amen. He's tired. And Satan found him and he said, He said, All this that you look out here, you can see. He said, It can be yours. If you just bow down and you worship me. He didn't go after him when he was on top of the mountain. Amen. He went after him when he found him in a weak moment. Amen. We can have, we can say we've got boldness, Matthew, all day long. Like David, I believe David had boldness when Saul and everybody else would go after old Goliath. He had boldness, little old red-headed boy, slingshot and five smooth stones. That man going after a Philistine giant. He had boldness. Had boldness, didn't he? Yeah. And he said, that same God that delivered me out of the paw of the bear and the lion. He said, I know that same God will deliver me. Amen. He had boldness. Amen. Amen. We need that same type of boldness. Amen. Amen. We need that same type of boldness. We need that same type of obedience. <coughs> Amen. How many times, Dave, you've been driving down the road and God said, I want you to stop, Dave. I want you to go do this. And you have your moment in your vehicle with God. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. I can't tell you the time of day that I've been driving down the road. And God say, stop, son, I want you to get a cup of coffee. My first Lord, I'm making enough coffee today to float back. I don't need no more. He said, I said, stop and get one. So I would. Get back in the truck 10 minutes later, get on up the road, and guess what? The interstate shut down, somebody wrecked, somebody done this, somebody done that. If we'll listen and be obedient to the voice of God when He speaks, it's right. much better than life. Let me just say this when we sing. That's right. Remember, I believe it's Elijah got up there. <clears throat> Elijah, Elisha, one, the Holy Two. And they were waiting for God to come in the great big earthquake. Wait for the thunder to roll and the lightning to flash. Wait for God to move in that. Wait for God to move in the wind. Amen. Wait for God to move in all these big, great, miraculous things. And God never did it that way. But you know when God moved? small boys. That's what we got to do with you two today. Is that still little small voice. Amen. Sometimes people say when you hang them by a thread, tie it in a knot. Sometimes it feels like that knot's breaking on you. Amen. If you have a need this morning, God is standing with me this morning. Standing together, Lord God, that's all I got.